Breaking surprising data from China coming in overnight. The Purchasing Managers Index showing an expansion just a month after it showed a record rate of contraction. Eunice Yoon joins us this morning from Beijing. Good morning to you, Eunice. Good morning, Andrew. You know, even the National Bureau of Statistics, which usually puts a positive spin on the numbers, was playing down these figures, uh, saying that the rebound is only happening because February's data was just so miserable. So the March manufacturing PMI came in at 52. That beat expectations of a contraction of 45. And the Bureau, as well as plenty of analysts, have been saying that this does not indicate a sustained recovery or even stabilization of economic activity. It says, that new export orders contracted and over half of manufacturers reported a lack of demand. This is, of course, as countries around the world continue to impose lockdowns because of the virus spread. Now, the expectations here are that the Chinese government is still likely going to continue with stimulus measures. This is after uh, President Xi Jinping has been touring factories and ports along the East Coast to indicate that resumption of work is a priority. Uh, the country, though, is still very nervous. Uh, people are worried about the spread of infections returning to China and also of spread locally. And that was indicated by the Chinese premier, who's been urging local authorities to now monitor and isolate asymptomatic cases. The reason why that's interesting is because up till now, China has not been counting asymptomatic cases in its overall numbers. And as of today, uh, the National Health Commission said that tomorrow, um, April 1st, they are going to start counting um, asymmetric, um, asymptomatic cases in their overall daily briefings. So that from China's perspective, should address some of the uh, public concern, both uh, here in China as well as globally, about the, um, the, the, the fact that they don't and haven't been counting these, these cases up till now. Guys? Hey, Eunice, before you go, I'm just curious more about what's going on on the ground in terms of your day-to-day, -day, given that we sort of look at China as the model for what may be coming to the United States or is coming to the United States. You know, we talk about the end of, of April potentially uh, being able to open up for business. Other people talk about it being in June. Uh, you've now lived through this. It looks, I would say, something on the order of, what, eight to nine weeks at this point. What, what yeah, is it just I mean, nine, in terms of yeah, going right, out? Are people, do so? people go to restaurants? Do people what, – what, what, what's actually happening? It's definitely gotten a lot better, especially this past weekend. A, a lot more people are at restaurants. Um, I went myself, and I, was, I went to a restaurant. There were 10 tables open, of course, all spaced out. Nine of them were occupied. Um, there have been some changes in the way that uh, they still uh, require have, um, um, say, have requirements where they want only three people at each table, for example. Also, there are a lot of preventive measures. The, um, here in China, there were serving um, uh, uh, chopsticks on the table, as well as um, that I was at, the restaurant I was at, and, as, and uh, the dishes were wrapped in plastic. So that was something that um, you see sometimes in China, but it was really different in some high-end restaurants. Um, also, today I saw a lot more workmen on um, lands like doing landscaping, which hasn't really been happening because a lot of migrant workers haven't been allowed in the cities. And now you're seeing that more and more. And one other thing that personally I've been waiting for is for the dry cleaners at my residential compound to open up because those people are from outside of Beijing and have not been allowed into the city for quite some time or into the residential compound. So they told me that they finally were able to open their doors because they passed they finally were allowed back into the city. They went through the 14-day quarantine, and then the compound itself said that they are now allowed to enter and open up their own shop. So there are definitely signs of green shoots in China of economic activity. Andrew? Hey, hey Eunice, we, uh, you know, we look at, at, at China, and it gives us a lot of hope here now. And, and we've, you know, we've talked, uh, you know, through email a few times about how, you know, do you have room at your house? We never thought it would get that way where, you know, I'm ready. We're ready to move our families over there to, to uh, if you have room because it's now here. But part of that is dependent on believing uh, some of the overall numbers in uh, that, that we've seen. And there's all these this undercurrent. Uh, and I don't know whether it's reached you there. I'm sure it has 
about what the real infection rate might have been in Wuhan and what the real mortality numbers might have been. Do you see those? Do you have a feel for how close those are? Because they're, you know, some of this says that the numbers are much higher in terms of mortality and they've got these you know, crazy conspiracy type theories about what the numbers are. Are you confident that those numbers are pretty close yeah. to, to reality? It's really difficult to say. Uh, we see the same things that, that I'm sure you see. Uh, there are there have recently been reports about how uh, people have been now picking up the ashes of their loved ones and uh, seeing a lot of photos of the number of urns and the uh, the trucks that carry those urns don't seem to reflect the same number that's being reported. So there are a lot of ways in which people are just very uh, skeptical about the official figures. And then, of course, like I was talking about with the asymptomatic numbers, people are saying, well, if the Chinese are, are not really being open about asymptomatic cases, what else are they not being open about? So there are a whole lot of questions about the numbers, but I would say one thing, and that is in China today, anyway, when there, when you do see major news here, um, it does start spilling out onto the internet. And even at there, there's a certain period of time when the, the censors are trying to figure out, do I censor? Do I not censor? What happens? So it's almost as if the, the internet opens, you start to see a lot of news that um, the government might not want you to see, and then it closes up, and then maybe you don't see it anymore. So because we haven't seen these uh, massive uh, stories about huge outbreaks in other parts of the country or piles and piles of bodies outside of, of, of uh, hospitals, which we did see before Wuhan, um, that, that gives me some, um, some confidence that uh, the outbreak here and the epidemic isn't is, is actually getting better and better, in addition to the fact that the government is easing up on some of these lockdowns and other restrictions.